Okay, so this is part two of episode two. Uh, so this by the glass change is live right now. Um, and I'm going to buzz through this one uh, kind of quickly here. Uh, so we have a little bit more of an easier wine to talk about. Um, so uh, let's be fast. Uh, this is Chevalier Femme Malbec Rosé 2017. Uh, this is our new rosé. Hechten Bagne is gone. It is still on the bottle list. Um, but we are moving on to this by the glass. Um, this is from... The Appalachian, here you go, the Cote du Lot. Uh, what does that mean? So you can see that it says IGP, Cote du Lot, right here. So as we know, most Appalachians say AOP. That is the highest tier of Appalachian in France. Uh, and then IGP is just below it. Um, generally, larger areas um, and less restrictions on grape varieties, winemaking techniques, uh, things like that. Um, so generally, wines that have the IGP logos on it are a little bit um, easier on the price point. Um, but they can be really well made. Uh, some IGP wines are really great, both from this area, the Rhone, the Languedoc, uh, things like that. So uh, we've got a good good thing coming here. Uh, so a little bit about Chateau Femme. Chateau Femme, uh, we do have a red of theirs also uh, that is also 100% uh, Malbec. Uh, and that is a Cahor, uh, which is the appellation in which they're located. Uh, Cahor is the indigenous home to Malbec. Um, and it's a really earthy style of, uh, of Malbec. It's quite delicious. Um, and, uh, and then they have this Chevalier Femme line of wines from the IGP Cote du Lot. And uh, that's where this, uh, this rosé comes in. Um, and so let's get to it. All right, so you can tell it's pretty pink. Sorry, I'm still working on the color uh, camera thing here. So uh, pretty pink, maybe a touch of orange going on here. But uh, really, really pretty, almost magenta, light magenta color here. On the nose, really bursting fruit, uh, really big cranberry, pomegranate, really fresh strawberry, strawberry blossoms for flowers, absolutely. Maybe a little bit of rose. Uh, a touch of cream, this sits on the leaves and tank for just a little bit, so you just have a little bit of a creamy thing going on here. And then some, you know, kind of more generic, but uh, definitely noticeable um, rocky minerality here. No oak to talk about. All right, let's taste it. This wine is dry, very dry. <coughs> All of our rosés are dry. Bottle, glass, everything. Uh, this is quite nice. Um, it definitely echoes pretty much everything. You have a one to one variety in a wine. Generally, the nose and the palate are going to be pretty similar. Uh, so again, lots of red fruit. Strawberries are the dominating character here. Definitely some cranberry, pomegranate, things to talk about. Um, strawberry yogurt, a little bit on the palate. It's quite, uh, quite nice. Um, strawberry blossoms, uh, white tea thing going on here. No oak again to talk about. Uh, just a little bit of that creaminess from the lees. Pretty, uh, pretty much Bob's your uncle here, uh, Malbec Rosé. Uh, this is made from the Sagné method. Uh, there are two ways of making rosé. Uh, one is Sagné. Uh, what that means is, uh, as the juice is soaking with the skins, uh, it goes from clear to dark red if you're making a red wine. Uh, however, if you pull the plug on the tank uh, while it is just still pink uh, before it gets fully red, uh, then you have a rosé. And that's what we've got here. This is our standard uh, price for Rosé by the Glass right now. $15 for the glass, $60 for the bottle. Uh, it is in screw cap, uh, so no more annoying glass corks uh, on the uh, Heston Bagne. And uh, there we go. Should be an easy sell. I uh, hope everyone likes it. And uh, thanks for watching.